Hi, Brian Andrew here, Merit Financial Advisors Chief Investment Officer, and today I'm sharing important information you'll want to know for this month's market update. If we learned anything during the first quarter of 2024, it's that investors can't have it all. As last year came to a close, it seemed that the soft landing scenario for the economy was becoming clearer and stocks rallied while interest rates remained sanguine didn't make much sense to us as a soft landing portends stronger labor markets and a continuation of the higher inflation the Federal Reserve has been concerned about. Fast forward almost four months into the year and we see that the stock rally has faltered a bit while interest rates have indeed risen. Let's break down the economic numbers and market reaction, then discuss what this means for the rest of the year. The most recent labor market report showed job growth in excess of 300,000, well above the 12-month average of 231,000 and above what was expected. The unemployment rate ticked down to 3.8%. While many of these jobs were created in government and healthcare, there were other signs of strength like construction. Wage growth continued at an inflationary pace with the annual rate up 4.1%. The Purchasing Managers Index for Manufacturing and Services also rose in April. In fact, the global PMIs rose indicating expansion around the world. The JP Morgan Global Composite PMI rose to 52.3, the highest in nine months, while the services sector rose the quickest in eight months. When the index goes above 50, it indicates expansion is taking place. We've also seen strength in commodity prices, which may reflect the benefits of that faster global economic growth. Oil prices have risen along with metals prices such as copper. Because these commodities find their way into so many parts of the economy, their prices rise may reflect an increase in demand that comes from faster economic growth. Taken together, we receive plenty of evidence that the economy continues to outperform expectations. All this evidence of better economic performance does two things. It creates doubt in the minds of investors that interest rates will be coming down anytime soon and suggests that inflation may be harder to get under control. We see this in the rise in bond yields during the first quarter and continuing in April. The 10-year treasury has risen to 467 from 388 and the three-month T-bill hasn't really moved indicating short rates will stay the same. Interest rates may move higher a bit we'll likely continue to see larger average maturities in our bond portfolios. The yield advantage enjoyed by owning corporate bonds has diminished to the point where it is well below the long-term average, and so we'll look to reduce our exposure there in favor of mortgage-backed securities. As I mentioned, stocks have come down because of the adjustment to the new rate expectations. Interest rates affect stock prices because we use those rates to calculate the present value of future earnings. Rates and earnings are the key drivers to stock prices over time. A higher interest rate makes those future earnings less attractive and makes bonds a better alternative. After seeing stock indexes rise almost 10%, they've seen a 5% correction in the last several weeks. This could also be due to a concern about earnings expectations. Analysts are an optimistic bunch and they've raised the earnings growth rate for the S&P 500 to over 11%. If investors become less comfortable with this estimate, they may adjust prices down to reflect a slower earnings growth rate. Due to the heightened concerns over Middle East unrest, the escalation of the war in Ukraine and elections here at home, we think the market is weathering uncertainty better than could be expected. In our portfolios, we are favoring a bit less active management. We continue to believe that having exposure to underperforming segments of the stock market makes sense. The top performing 10 stocks in the S&P account for more than two thirds of its performance. This means that there are many companies in the index that may remain better value. As we move through April, we'll get great information from companies about their first quarter's earnings performance. This should provide some insights into whether or not that 11% growth rate is too aggressive and what sectors are doing well despite the above desired rate of inflation. For now, the recession that has been forecast for over a year still seems a ways off and what was perceived as a late cycle market may be more mid-cycle. And our positioning will reflect that. Thank you for tuning in to this month's market update. Don't forget to follow us on social media to be the first to receive important news and updates from Merit Financial Advisors. I'll see you next time.